Welcome to TPI, the global leader in test products. Hello, Jim Widener here to uh, just kind of show you how to use uh, the TPI VibeTrim software to run with your 9080 vibration meter. Uh, just kind of want to walk through all the settings, how you build a machine, how to add vibration points, how to upload and download and everything. So with that, I'm just going to kind of walk you through what happens when you install the software. You start at this main screen here, and all you're going to see is a machine manager when you begin. So all you do after you collect or all the information on all the machines that you want to collect data on is you just right click and you're going to add a machine. This is where you're going to put your first machine in. So it could be pump number one, blower number one. And I'm going to start with just calling the first machine pump number one. So then we just tell it add. If you want to have an email address to get email notifications on this machine, you can add that here. But we're just going to add this machine. And now you see we have a little plus symbol here. You click on the plus, and then you're going to see your machine below. So right now we don't have anything below that, but the next thing we would add are our vibration points below pump number one. So on your pump, you're going to have your motor non-drive-in, motor drive-in, pump drive-in, pump non-drive-in. So I'm going to right-click here, and I'm going to add my first vibration point. Simply tell it to add, and this is where I give it the name, and this is what shows up on the 9080 vibration meter when you're collecting data. And we're going to type in MTR for motor, and then I put NDE for non-drive-in. So we're going to start at the back of the motor and work our way to the front and then to the pump. So after you put that in, this we have to put the speed of the mo motor in. I'm going to put in 1800 RPM because that's what this pump's going to be turning. And then I set my ISO standards or my ISO alarms. So right here we have a group 1 flexible, group 2, group 3. Usually starting off in the facility, if I don't have a vibration program or my machines are running a little rougher, I set everything to group 1 flexible. So there you can see the values and everything right there in millimeters per second. My bearing damage units are set at 50 and 100. This is a good place to default or start with your bearing damage units. And then I simply say add. Now, that's what I'm going to do here real quick and show you. As you saw, everything was in millimeters per second. If you want to see things in inches per second, you just go up to your setup point right here, and then your units. This is where you set everything. So I'm going to set everything to cycles per minute and imperial units. And then my displacement, I want in peak to peak, and I tell it OK. So now when I'm doing my setup, I'll see everything in inches per second. So after your motor non-drive-in, the next thing you want to do is add a motor drive-in reading. So I just right-click, add vibe point, and now same thing. I'm going to put in MTR for motor, and then NDE for non-drive-in, or actually I want DE for drive-in. And then 1800 is my speed. And then once again, I go here, my ISO standard, group one flexible, and 50 and 100 for my bearing damage unit alarm level, and I tell it to add. Now, I need to add my pump. So once again, we just right click, add vibe point, and now we're gonna go PMP for pump, and then we'll do DE for the drive end, speed 1800, and group one flexible and 50 and 100. Now we go here, add our pump non drive in, so we add vibe point, shift PMP, NDE for non drive in. And our speed is 1800, group 1 flexible, and we're leaving our bearing damage units at 50 and 100. 
and we're finished and there's our first pump. Now when you have multiple pumps that are alike, all I have to simply do is right click on this and now I can copy this machine and go to my machine manager, right click, paste, and now we'll call this pump number two. And now I've created my second machine just by doing that. So now when I click on the plus, I got pump one, pump two. And then if I wanted to add number three, I could just right click, paste again, and then make pump number three and add it. And that's all there is to building your vibration points in your machine. So if you saw the ISO alarm levels there when we were setting these up as well, when I go in here and edit, so we can see if you have any questions on this, that there's the ISO chart. You can click on the ISO chart and it shows you where the values are both in millimeters per second and inches per second and where those alarms should be set. Good rule of thumb is to walk out with your vibration meter, take some readings off your machine, and just kind of see where they're running. Are they running at 0.09 inches per second, 0.1 inch per second, and then set the values just above that. But the whole idea is to get all your vibration levels running as low as possible, because the less vibration you have in the machine, the longer the machine's going to last. So. That's under your ISO chart if you want to see where the alarm levels are for the different ISO vibration levels. Then I can go cancel here after building that. And then uh, the other thing you'll look at that you'll run into a fair amount is with your bearing damage unit alarm levels, where we have those set at 50 and 100 is what we have are some charts, but if you edit here, everything's gonna default at 50 and 100. On your pump, sometimes you'll run into cavitation, different things will cause that value to go up. Um, speed could do it, but a good rule of thumb, most of your machines running at about 1800 should be at around 50 and 100 is a good level or a good place to be. These numbers you might find you need to bump them up to 100 and 200 on an 1800. 3600 RPM, you're fairly safe to go to 250 for a caution and 350 for your critical. So just because they're turning faster, you get a lot more energy out of those alarm levels at that point. So, but that's really all there is to setting up your machine. So after you've built the machines, the next thing you wanna do is figure out how do I get them into my route manager? Basically, we have to build a route to load them into our 9080 vibration machine. So here, I just say add a route, and I'll call this my pump route. Then I tell it OK. Now over on this side, now I select the machines I want to put into my route. So now I have to add a machine, and I want to add pump number one. Tell it OK. Add my next machine. Will be pump 2. Then add pump 3. Tell it OK. And now I've added the three machines to it. And at this point, I am done. So I just tell it to exit. Now I have a route there that I can upload and download to my machine. So when I click on 2 meter, once I've plugged in my 9080 through the USB, I can load my pump route in, and it's going to be pump 1, pump 2, and pump 3 underneath this route in the route manager. Then I just tell it OK. I don't have a 9080 hooked up right now, so it's going to check for a device and see that there's no cradle detected. So that is all there is to it.